Welcome to the Conservation Learning Center's 2020 Virtual Field Day. We are releasing a series of videos that showcase some of our current research and demonstration here on site. Thank you to our Field Day sponsors, the Saskatchewan Wheat Development Commission and the Saskatchewan Flax Development Commission, as well as all of our other funders who support research here on site. This trial, we're looking at best management practices for production of Haskaps in Saskatchewan. It is a multi-year project that's been funded through the Strategic Field Program that's made possible by the Canadian Agricultural Partnership. We have Forrest Scharf here with us today. He is the Provincial Specialist of Fruit Crops with the Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture. This is the Haskap Agronomy Trial. It's a Strategic Field Program uh, funded project as mentioned. Uh, there's several different components to this, so maybe I should introduce what Haskap is in the first place. It's a fruiting perennial crop. Uh, it is partially from areas like uh, Siberia and also from the islands of Hokkaido in northern Japan. Uh, some of those varieties were crossed and we have uh, what they're calling Haskap now based on the Ainu name from Japan for this crop and it produces fruit. Um, and it, as opposed to some other fruit crops, it produces fruit fairly rapidly. So in the second year, as opposed to four or five years from the time it's planted, it starts producing fruit and we'll show a little bit of that today. This trial is to try to figure out what the best agronomic practices are to produce this crop. And so there's different components of what we're testing here. The first section or first block of this trial is a plastic mulch trial. Or, or a mulch trial in general, I guess, because we have black plastic, we have white plastic, we have a wood mulch, a red wood, wood mulch, a landscape fabric, which is a little heavier material that lasts a lot longer. And then there's also a control that doesn't have any mulch on it. Uh, it's a little more difficult to control the weeds in that case. So uh, we're also measuring labor to try to determine what the most economic way to produce this crop is. There's also some other components to this trial. Uh, there's a fertilizer block, and that one measures different levels of fertilizer, and we have a granular treatment. So in the spring, we're putting out granular fertilizer, uh, but then some of the other components are going via drip irrigation. We have an irrigation uh, emitter that runs down the length of the row, and we can add fertilizer, and that uh, is delivered through the irrigation water, and we can um, add that as the crop grows and throughout the season at different levels. So we're trialing that at different uh, amounts. And then beyond the fertilizer block is an irrigation block. And in that one, we have uh, a single line, a single drip line that's going twice a week at a spe specific rate. And then there's another row that has uh, three times a week. It's getting the same sort of application and then uh, two rows that have two lines and they're also going twice a week and three times a week and we're testing the growth and uh, the amount of fruit and other parameters on that treatment. So uh, those are some of the things that we're looking at and we have noted some differences mainly so far in cultivars. There's a little bit of a growth difference between the higher level fer fertilizers and the higher level watering although uh, in 2019 we started getting rain and 2020 it's been fairly decent moisture levels here so the differences are probably not as pronounced as they would have been had it been a dry year. Um, some of the cultivars are fruiting and I guess we can show some of those uh, and we'll just focus in on some of the plants and show the fruit that's coming uh, and as I said this is the second year so pretty early fruiting for a, a perennial fruit crop. Another component of this trial is a cultivar testing. So there are 20 different cultivars. Uh, the majority are from the University of Saskatchewan breeding program and those are featured in the, the first section here of this mulch trial. Uh, the university varieties are crosses between the varieties from Japan and some of the Russian uh, and then they're bred with the best selections from the university. Um, and they're well suited to our environment. They're very winter hardy. Um, but one thing with a lot of these cultivars is they need cross-pollination and they need to get that cross-pollination from the other plants that uh, flower at the same time as they do. And so 
Uh, we don't have a completely randomized um, block here because we have to keep certain cultivars together. And I can show you some of these. Honeybee is a University of Saskatchewan variety. It's kind of featured as one of the pollinizers along with Aurora. And then we have Tundra, Indigo Treat, Indigo Gem, um, Boreal Beast and Boreal Beauty. And some of the university varieties are fruiting and we can show that this particular honeybee has a fair amount of fruit on it. It started and uh, the Russian varieties, there's I think two that have started to fruit and one of the Polish varieties. And we also have uh, Kawai, which is from Oregon. Um, and that variety also started to fruit, although it doesn't appear to be quite as winter hardy or um, as viable as some of the other ones potentially. So we'll analyze that and you'll hear about it in next year's field day.